Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Deliverance by Andrew Lowen, currently on Kickstarter. The game plays one to four players, takes about an hour to two hours to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game Deliverance, you are playing as angels, fighting against the forces of darkness, demons as they try and enter the realm. Uh, there are many different characters that you can choose from with tons of unique abilities and talents that you'll be gathering. Go in, gather your talents, level up, utilize your abilities, and defeat the hordes of darkness. And don't forget, you'll have to also defeat a demon lord. Uh, this is rife with tons of theme uh, from biblical verses of all the different angels and different uh, villains from the Bible. And there's a ton of uh, quotes and whatnot that explain the game. If you're able to successfully work together in this cooperative game and defeat the darkness without having your angels be defeated, you'll win the game. However, angels go to zero HP and you're not able to revive them, the game is over. There's additionally a campaign mode and a skirmish mode where you can play either or of your choosing. I'll go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how you can play it, and then of course my review for Deliverance. Welcome to Deliverance, currently set up for two players, and this is a skirmish mode. However, there are two modes. There's the skirmish mode, and of course, there is the campaign mode. You can play this solo, or you can play this with up to four players. Uh, I went ahead and chose Michael and Christine, uh, which is what me and Callie played with. Uh, me being Michael and Callie being Christine. Each player is going to get a player board, is going to get a, a turn or round order marker uh, card, as well as two action tokens. Uh, this will explain all the different abilities you have, have when you spend for actions and over here on the left is going to explain your stats the different types of damage you can deal and how much HP you have these are your talent decks you're going to be getting three decks the level one two and three you'll place them literally next to your board here and when you gain them you'll simply flip them over and place them up you may only have one talent for each of the different categories this is the main tracking board, which will track your experience as you gain it. It will track the different battle cards you'll have based on the number of players, in this case two, um, and of course where to place those guys. Like the Saint is going to go into this location and the Abomination is going to go in this one and is represented by the different symbols. And so for the same thing with the Saint and Masked Evils on this one. So if there was three players, another card would come out and another tile would come out. The characters are going to be placed somewhere on this side of the board here in a space of your choosing. The heavenly treasures and prayer cards will be placed over here. Your darkness cards will be shuffled up. And if you're playing with the prince, then you're going to place the cards here. Now in the first part of a skirmish, you will not be. So you can set the deck aside and just use darkness cards. And of course, make sure your battle deck is shuffled as well. Somewhere aside, go ahead and set all your tokens here. You're going to have different ones that will allow you to do certain things or gain certain benefits benefits throughout the game. There's also an initiative token to determine who is going to start the game first and of course how much experience you have and based on the number of players will determine how much experience you need to level up. So in a two player game or a one player game you'll need three and in a four player game you'll or, uh, sorry in a three player game you'll need four and in a four player game you will need five and that's how you're going to be using this tracker here and uh, every single one of these guys explains how much experience you gain whenever you cure a saint or you deal some damage or kill an evil character uh, if you want to increase the difficulty of the game there are going to be major talents and of course minor talents that you can give to the villains and based on the villains that are out in play you can set aside the their cards to explain what they do on their turn. Uh, additionally, of course, you're going to have the other talent cards for the other angels, which you will not need, along with, of course, the extra characters uh, for the bad guys and the extra boards, which is always going to be different because you have a ton of different options in the game. And to begin, you simply follow the round order card here. It's going to explain how the darkness phase works, where you're going to be getting one for each angel, and then also, of course, one for each oppressed saint. Oppressed saints are the saints that are face down on the board. Um, and of course, you'll skip this a step for the first round of the game. So in this case, because there are two oppressed saints, you'd normally put two cards down. But due to the fact that it's the first round, you're going to not do that. Just place the two for you having two angels. Resolve drawing excess cards. If there are any extra cards that would be drawn on the darkness stack here, you'll instead flip over darkness cards and interact with them. Some of them will remain in play for a long period of time, and others will be played instantaneously. And there's symbols to determine that based on the darkness cards. 
after you've gone ahead and resolved and discarded any cards that are not the same, uh, stay on the field here, you'll move on to your action phase. You'll refresh your action tokens, which are these guys here. When you've used them, you'll simply turn them over and you're going to pick an angel. So in this case, we'll have Callie go first. She's got two actions that she can utilize and these are the actions she can do. Whether it be advance with a range three, move up to three spaces, or maybe clash with a range one, she can deal her specific type of damage, which is indicated on not only the card here, but where it's stated over here. And of course, she'll gain certain benefits like maybe courage here, um, and so on and so forth. Each of these either have a cost or a benefit when it comes to courage, and some of them have um, the ability to do certain unique things like prey, for instance. Prey will let you revive fallen teammates uh, with one HP or they can let you cast down darkness cards and of course you're always going to be able to draw a prayer card these are unique active abilities that you can use throughout the game that will help progress you guys in completing your mission of defeating darkness and so after she uses both her abilities she would end her turn so she'll go ahead and flip over this one here and it'll allow her to move up to three spaces one two and three you always know, moving up down left or right and then for instance i can go ahead and just use the clash it's got range one range is based on one two three four so based on how far away from the first space and she can say okay i'm going to do two damage and in that case she would take her damage markers and then assign it to the baddies and in this case, we have the Abomination, and it explains how the Abomination looks and works, uh, the, the different amount of Abominations you can have. And since I have the number two out here, I would simply put the damage on the number two icon, indicating that the Demon, or the Abomination, with this specific marker is the one that's taking the damage. And of course, it tells you its HP over here, which is 13, and all of its abilities. And you'll go from top to bottom when you deal with these guys here, which I'll explain in a second. After that, she's done her damage. Uh, she may move uh, that demon one space. So in this case, she could move that demon right over there. When she's next to one of these guys, she can flip it at the end of her turn and she'll be able to gain experience. And it explains how much experience you'll gain as long as this is here. If you're next to it, adjacent to it, or on top of it, in this case, it would be three experience and she could move this up here. Uh, the same thing for demons. When demons go next to it, it would flip over and oppress the saints. So you're always gonna wanna have characters protecting the saints and keeping them from being oppressed. After an angel goes, the demons will go. You'll choose the demons based on the track here, so the abomination, and then you're going to follow the guidelines. Uh, first of all, you'll do the actions that are instant, like this one here, range, test on a seven on success, afflict an angel with root. In this case, uh, if there's an adjacent angel, he, would, he or she would roll uh, two dice, and test if it's lower than the number nothing happens and if it is a higher than or equal to that number then the angel could become rooted and all of these are different status effects that can affect players negatively then of course the action will resolve you'll take one of the die you'll roll the action die and then you're going to do what it says in this case it's a one so range one move five move to the closest angel engage and then do five damage take the damage and place it on the angel and then of course they would be the end of the abominations turn and it would go on to the next angel utilize the actions move your angel around the board and attempt to defeat these guys here after the entire round has been completed you'll check for level ups and in this case bam we'd level up so this would go to zero each angel could choose one of two things either gathering a heavenly treasure uh, well technically i believe you draw two or three and choose one of them those give you stat bonus upgrades or unique specific uh, uh, written text which will tell you what they do or you can draw two of these guys here and pick one of them and they'll give you passive or active abilities that you can utilize on your turn that will benefit you so it's just making yourself stronger and it's really up to you whether you want to increase your talents or if you want to just gather the treasures that allow you to kind of buff yourself as the game goes on then once again the darkness phase will take place you'll draw the darkness cards based on the number of players based on the oppressed saints uh, you're going to go ahead and refresh all the tokens and go again you'll use your characters move around the board inflicting their damage utilizing their skills and attempting to work together to defeat uh, evil or defeat darkness and also another thing to denote don't forget uh, whenever you do your abilities make sure you pay or gain the courage as stated so when i did that clash ability he's going to gain that courage she's going to gain that courage there which will be used for these specific abilities here there's a certain cost it's like oh it requires an action and one courage an action and two courage or you can simply an action and gain a courage and all the symbols tell you certain things like for instance there's free actions with wings and then the actions with a little hourglass are when you have to utilize these guys here 
If your angels ever go down to zero HP and are not revived, and both of them die in this case, then you lose the game. However, if you're able to defeat all the baddies here, then you'll move on to the final mission, or the final battle, where you're going to be fighting one of the super supreme evils. You've got these guys here, like Ball, for instance, or the Euphrates Frogs, or Deva, or Herod, or and. Anticus, Anticus, the Prince of Greece, and they all have their own unique decks. Of course, the Prince deck, you'll be taking one of these guys out during the, the darkness phase, and you'll be utilizing that. It's, they're, they're really nasty, and all these abilities are really powerful as well, and their HP is based on the number of players, and they increase based on that number of players as well. It becomes a really challenging ob objective, but the objective remains the same. You have to defeat the baddies. But anyway, that's pretty much the idea of the game. There's, of course, a couple different types of tokens I didn't discuss. I didn't show you all the different abilities I wanted you guys to have the opportunity to discover all the unique different active abilities and the unique different passives and all of the <laughs> prayers and heavenly treasures. There's a ton of stuff to look through and play. They're going to never have the same battle twice. And there's just so many different things that can change the way your angels function. And there's a ton of extra angels in the game as well. Look on the Kickstarter to find out what else is in this game. Let's go ahead and have my review now. The first thing I saw with Deliverance was the art, and the art in this game is spectacular. One of my favorite styles of artwork, and of course, high detail. The theming to this game works very well for the art as well. You're playing as angels, and you do feel like you're moving around defeating the hordes of darkness. The boards are ever-changing based on the number of players, and the demons are also represented based on that aspect as well. Each angel functions differently. You're going to have a unique action skill set for your angels, as well as talent cards for leveling up. Here you can play as Christine, and these are the different abilities she has and of course the different stats and she's going to have her talent decks for level one two and three and if you don't want to use talents you don't have to because you can use a heavenly treasures which will give yourself permanent stat upgrades in the game uh, this gameplay is a cooperative style game, right? So you're going to be having your angels on one side of the board, demons on the other, and then you're going to basically be taking turns back and forth, attempting to use your actions to then progress through the game, whether it be moving and attacking, praying, reviving angels, gathering skills or talents, uh, utilizing status effect tokens. You can also go ahead and protect the saints that are on the board as well while the demons are trying to oppress them, defeat the battle, move on to the prince's final battle and if you can defeat the prince which is extremely challenging then you'll win the game and of course there's a campaign mode i hadn't played the campaign mode it wasn't available for the review but it does exist and i got to see a lot of the stuff that it comes with which looks really cool uh, the base skirmish mode which is basically what i'll be talking about in this game is pretty straightforward now there's a lot to do and a lot of options but how the game plays is very easy and you're going to have this wonderful little round order token which not only tells you all the different status effects on the back side but how to play the game. Uh, placing out cards, the darkness cards, one per angel. And these things can be nasty and slowly they fill the board and slowly they start doing things to you uh, if you're not able to dispel the darkness, which you can do as an angel. And then of course the oppressed saints. If you do not uh, work together to get near the uh, saints and try and unoppress them, then you're gonna have to deal with more darkness cards, which is really cool. I like that aspect of the game because it doesn't just focus on battling. You have to also worry about positioning because first and foremost, this is a tactics game, but positioning makes a huge difference, not just in combat, but how you choose to protect yourself against the forces of darkness. Um, and then of course you have your action phase. You're going to have the two actions. You'll utilize them and each angel functions differently. One might be a healer, one might be a protector, one might be a tank or a damage dealer. Uh, utilize for movement so you can get around the board and so on and so forth. And then of course uh, they, the fact that you're going to have to deal with the darkness characters. And every darkness character has their own unique board. They function differently. They feel differently. There's a ton of theme loaded into each of the bad guys and you'll see on the back of all of the different cards or the player boards and, and evil boards. Um, not only just quotes from the Bible which increase the amount of theme and you get to think about the lore involved with that but also of course the fact that the abilities change depending on the prince and how you have to deal with them and some of them can be very 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 challenging which is good so if you like tactics games with a lot of challenge this is definitely one I would suggest picking up. Um, the leveling up 
aspect is cool because you'll be able to choose a certain number of talents, you'll be able to look at them, pick one of them, place it face up, and that will be your level one talent, moving on to level two and level three, and everything is based on player count, so more experience is needed for more players. More players means more bad guys, which thusly gives you an increase in experience as you defeat them. You'll be doing things like choosing a talent that gives you more range, or plus to healing, or some unique thing that allows you to use virtue and pass it over, or courage, I should say, and pass it over to other players. And courage is a uh, commodity of sorts, which allows you to utilize skills as well as skills give you them. And so you have to combo off of those skills in order to use the courage to your best potential. Um, additionally, too, which is kind of cool, is not only does the experience track is marked uh, based on the bad guys you kill, but there's going to be a battle track, and these function very simply. You flip over one, based on the tile, you're going to locate the baddies, place them down on that tile based on the different symbols, and there's only three for each of the tiles, so it's very quick to set up how this game works. There's a lot of tokens like that in this game, but you're going to get to know them really quickly. You're going to have your experience token, you're going to have your action tokens, and your courage, and those are the main ones you'll focus on. Everything else is kind of like shields or an empowering effect or disempowering effect like wither. And then of course like a, a light space that'll give your character some type of boon or darkness that gives you guys some type of negative effect. Um, and you don't use those highly as much as you do the basic three. Um, and then of course you have die rolling in this game. So if you're not a big fan of die rolling, although this does have mitigation, you will be using that luck factor by rolling die. Mainly uh, your abilities will do attack damage based on your stats and then you'll get a bonus with the die roll. So for me, I, I like that actually. The the normal tactics games where it's all about die rolling uh, to see if you succeed or not, not so great. But the fact that you're using die to improve upon your base uh, action that you're taking. So for instance, you'll deal five damage and if you succeed in this die roll, you'll do an additional five damage or you can move three more spaces or you can gain some more courage, which then you can transfer to other players. It's kind of like an additional bonus. So even if you fail at succeeding die rolls, it's still possible to win the game. You're not really, it's, it's not a huge dilemma uh, and of course rolling die and, and succeeding is going to help and talents and specific things like your your prayer cards that you can get when praying or treasures if you choose not to level up gaining these guys here will give you those benefits or potentially a negative and a benefit depending on how strong it is um, and that's pretty much the idea of it and in the campaign mode variant you'll go from step to step to step I'm guessing the different battles up until the point where you fight the prince and in the skirmish mode you just set it up as I explained you fight the battle you go on and fight the prince and if you you succeed at both, you win the game. If you love a game loaded with theme, if you love the artwork for this game, if you like tactics with not only a little bit of die rolling, but also straight up strategy, and of course, if you like games with a ton of options and variability, but also being very simple, then Deliverance is something for you. If you don't like cooperative games, if you don't like tactics games, if you think that there might be too many choices in this because this is a medium to heavy game, even though it is simple to understand, this might not be for you. The game's theme does have a bit of a angels and demons, so it does have a little bit of a darker theme. Um, so be aware of that when you're playing with younger audience, but for the most part, I think pretty much any audience can get behind this game. And if you're somebody who's interested in um, playing a game based off of um, the, the Bible, this is actually going to be one of those that I would suggest you to take a look at because it does it a good job. I don't think it does any, I don't think it has any negative aspects in regards to that. So those are my critiques for the game and of course the benefits. For me, I really like this game. I'm very excited to see what it's going to look like in its final form because as it stands right now, just in the prototype, I am extremely satisfied with Deliverance currently on Kickstarter. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can choose to pick the game up if you'd so choose or if you'd like. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Deliverance, currently on Kickstarter. If you'd like, link down below, like I said previously. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe bell button notification as well, so you can see more of our videos as we produce them. New studio, still working out the echo, still adding a bunch of different little sound pieces all around the room, so that way it's not gonna be so echoey, and hopefully this is better than our previous video. Um, and of course, we're gonna have a new live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. 
instead of Wednesdays. Moonshell, no new updates, still processing the last bits of things until we can get the game out. Uh, there's a link down below for that as well. And of course, thank you Patreon members for supporting us through this time, um, for transitioning through the move and to pay for the shipping of the giveaways. Speaking of which, a giveaway is just finished from the last night's uh, stream, which will be posted on Discord right after this video. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to delivering you next time.